For the settings I shot this at, for the golden hour we still need to have a little bit more light shining into the landscape. So that's a nice tip to improve your photos to your interpretation, how you see that composition. This is tip number one. So when you're shooting landscapes, be super early. Shoot when it's blue hour, uh, magic hour or golden hour. When you're shooting at the blue hour, golden hour or uh, the magic hour, you're so early that most of the people are still in bed or maybe have to go to work when it's in the, in the week. Uh, today it's a Sunday morning. Uh, they're already past some people with their dog, but for the rest it's super quiet because it's early and it's freezing, so nobody wants to go out except me and people with dogs that have to go out for the dog. <laughs> I'm going to show you what I'm photographing right now because this is actually pretty nice and uh, it's already past the, the blue hour and this is what I'm looking at. I'm uh, looking into this puddle that you can see here. Right I'm looking at, into this puddle that you can see right here. We got a beautiful reflection from the sky that's uh, orange. We got a little bit of uh, haze in the, in the landscape. The light from the back lighting it up a little bit, a little bit and making it a little bit uh, of an orange glow. So it's super beautiful. It's super quiet. There are no clouds. So uh, this is a good picture for like, like blue hour going to the magic hour because in magic hour the lights will be lit up from the sun with some uh, beautiful pink purple colors but we don't have clouds so the sun is st still rising but it's not uh, shining onto the landscape yet so we got that beautiful glowing orange light and if we would take a photo to the other side you can see in the sky that it's going to be more of a bluish uh, sky instead of this uh, beautiful orange sky that you're seeing in my back it's a little bit blown out. And uh, the magic hour is upon us. Uh, I didn't saw there was so many clouds in, in the sky, but they're all turned uh, pink, so that's super cool. And uh, I am uh, already took a photo because it's going so fast, uh, the colors are changing super fast. Uh, I've put uh, the camera in uh, the vertical orientation, because if you want to take a photo, this is our second tip from, for this video. In the back, we got this beautiful birch tree with uh, all branches going to other sides. You don't see birch trees with so many thick branches going to other sides. So this is a very beautiful tree in my eyes. Here in the foreground, we got a Scotch pine. And I'm also including this into the picture to have a, a foreground element. We got this small Scotch pine into the foreground. Then we got a beautiful tree. And then in the back, we got a beautiful pink sky with some beautiful uh, clouds and also with some uh, other uh, trees into the back. But just placing this Scott Spine into the foreground, that also creates for more depth of field. And more depth of field means we can, uh, we're gonna see more things into the picture and our eye is gonna lead from the one thing to the other thing and it's gonna be like, wow. Our mind is gonna go a little bit slower into this picture to visualize what we're seeing at that moment. And uh, we're gonna look around into the picture from for what I'm what what you are seeing. So that's a nice tip to improve your photos to create some interesting elements into the picture. And also being still into the magic hour, we got two elements going into this picture. We got a beautiful magic hour going on, and we got a beautiful foreground element making the picture more interesting. Because I think if I would sh uh, shoot this tree without a uh, foreground element. Most people will think it's still interesting because you got that magic hour and most of the people don't go out that early. So that's a little bit more special for the most people. And now it's extra special with the two ingredients for this picture. I shot this picture with a Tokina 11 to 60 millimeters, around 40 millimeters, because I'm fairly close to that Scotch pine. 
and uh, I also want to show more of the landscape so that's why I'm using a more of a wide, wide angle lens to show a little bit more because the, the clouds were all pinkish so that's super cool to see in this picture. For the settings I shot this at uh, ISO 100 F13 because we are so close to that pine tree I focused on the birch tree so I'm not focused onto our foreground element and for me personally it's okay if it's a little bit out of focus it's uh, a little bit soft, I don't mind that super much but uh, for the rest most of this picture is going to be super sharp because we're shooting at f13 so the trees in the back will also be sharp, the sky is going to be sharp so it's a very sharp picture and uh, our shutter speed is 3 of a second <laughs> the shutter speed doesn't uh, do much in this picture because there's no winds uh, so the shutter speed can longer or be shorter and it's still gonna be a nice picture let's go and search for another composition Just trying to shoot a photo of this beautiful little tree here behind me. But my photo tele lens is uh, already broken for uh, a very long time. The autofocus, the autofocus doesn't work anymore, and uh, the stabilization also doesn't work anymore. But now it's trying to shoot this picture. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but even on my tripod, it looked very blurry. So. I don't know, maybe the autofocus motor still triggers a little bit or I'm doing something wrong. I've tried to shoot it at a low shutter speed. I tried to bump it up to 60 of, of a second and even then the picture was still out of focus. It was shaked a little bit, so don't know what's happening, but it's time to get a new photo tele lens because I cannot work anymore with it. Apparently where I'm walking now there is water and my feet gets, got soaked so not super cool <laughs> especially when the, the temperature is minus and uh, also remember everything what I'm saying they're all tips and they can all be broken so you don't have to follow, follow them strictly you can add them to your photos to make them a little bit more interesting if it's uh, possible but I'm here at our next subject, this fallen tree. And what I'm doing right here is I'm uh, using this trunk here as a leading line into the picture when on the side we have the sun. And I've shot this picture with a higher uh, F number, so it's uh, like a sunburst. But making a picture Interesting is also like take a branch that you, you that you found on the ground and lay it onto the ground to make a leading line into your picture to make the eye follow it in the back of the picture and this one is a little bit uh, chaotic because we, we have all those branches uh, sticking around but it's just for demonstrating purposes that I'm uh, taking this picture to let you see what I mean with the leading line. I hope this image is uh, clear because it's a little bit dark and the sky is overexposed so I hope this works. So what I'm showing you here is this is the branch that I'm telling you about that is leading our eye into the frame. In the side here we have our uh, star sun that's uh, creating for a cool element in this picture. Just wanted to do that. <laughs> we don't need it but uh, it's fun. Hope you guys like these videos. I'm having a lot of fun and uh, actually I already forgot on which number we were I think this was three or was this already four <laughs> I don't know but to be certain I'm gonna gonna shoot two more compositions so maybe this is gonna be the six tips to to improve your photography but uh, our I already want to thank you guys for watching and uh, subscribing and liking. Super cool.
By the way, today I'm in uh, Kartierheide in uh, the Netherlands and uh, super beautiful here. I just met a nice fella, Willem, from, uh, from the Netherlands here and he also just started out with photography and uh, he came to me and started asking some questions about photography and he was wondering what I was doing so I told him I was making this video talking about compositions so and he distracted me a little bit so that's why I didn't remember anymore uh, which number we were at to making this uh, composition video but uh, talking about compositions I'm here at our next composition and I'm shooting this well, it looks re different in real life, but this is our tree that we're going to shoot. And uh, you probably already heard from uh, this composition, the rule of thirds. And this is one of the compositions that I'm almost constantly breaking because uh, it's not the best. <laughs> So that means you're gonna, we're going to divide our screen into nine squares and on the crossing lines there we're going to place our subject makes it look a little bit more interesting and you cannot only place it on the, the lines that are crossing but you can also place it in the two middle blocks of the frame so your, 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 your subject is in the middle of the frame or you can put it on the two side blocks of the frame and uh, you get it what I'm meaning so now I'm shooting this composition, the rule of third. Let me know what you think of this composition or the rule of third. But do you think it's a good rule or not? Are you also breaking this rule to make compositions? Because photography is still uh, an art form, so it's uh, your interpretation how you see that composition. So break the rules, break the, the tips and create your own art. I've put my Sigma 18 to 35 on here on uh, about 22 millimeters and I'm shooting at f9 and the sun starts to get a little bit hard so uh, it's time we're gonna shoot our last composition can't leave you guys hanging without the fifth and last composition how you can improve your photography And for our last composition, we really have to look for the best angle in this composition to make it stand out and we're gonna frame our subject. Don't have any distractions in the frame. So our eye only gets drawn to the subject and not everything around it that you're like, uh, what am I looking at? Like maybe the last picture with the fallen tree is a lot of branches and maybe you're like, yeah, I'm looking around in the tree and not following that line, but with this subject is super simple. So this is our sub subject and that's all you have to look at and all the rest around it in the landscape is uh, good enough to just fill the frame. Again, the Sigma 18 to 35 on here at uh, 35 millimeters. And uh, I'm shooting this tree here in the, in the, in the landscape at f4 at 400 of a second at iso 100 but i'm using f4 because i only want this tree to be focused and even the back branches are probably also going to be a little bit out of focus so the trees far in the back are going to be very soft and uh, that's going to make this tree stand out from this uh, environment from the landscape i still shot this picture when there was a little bit of sunlight so we still got a little bit of a yellowish light on the trees uh, on the leaves of this uh, Scots pine. This is also for uh, learning purposes. This is not the best composition out there. In my next videos, I'm gonna try to stand still a little bit more by the compositions that I make. A lot of times I'm going really fast because I'm I'm a little bit trained now with the years to see the compositions. So for me it's going very quick like, oh, there's a good composition, gonna shoot it. 
but I'm gonna try to go a little bit slower next time and also tell you why that composition is really cool for me or really nice so that you can uh, also learn from it a little bit maybe and uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one bye bye